Hello everyone, my name is Gaurang and I'm a cardiology fellow at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. We have Dr. D. Philippus here, who is an established translational researcher at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. So Dr. D. Philippus, what did you think of the ACC so far? Oh, it's been great. Uh, a variety of topics here is really something for everyone. Um, I really enjoyed a, a session yesterday about uh, the pearls and perils of implementing uh, high sensitivity troponins mm -hmm. for the diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction. I thought what was really interesting about the se session was not only you know covering the science of myocardial infarction and uh, the test itself, but really diving into how to implement this test in your hospital, in your healthcare system, and how that will differ, you know, differ uh, based on your, your practice setting. So I thought that was really interesting. This morning, uh, fantastic data on uh, TAVR, you know, to see in, in really just over a decade um, how this uh, non-invasive um, transarterial approach to replacing aortic valves uh, has really just uh, transformed uh, the treatment for aortic valve stenosis uh, and, and allowing uh, this procedure to be uh, s just such such a, a real advance for patients uh, to, to have this common um, you know abnormality treated. It's really was spectacular to see. Thank you. So after listening to the presentations over the past two days, what do you think are the questions that are still unanswered? Well, for the aortic um, trans, trans um, aortic valve replacement, uh, I think that the, the one area that uh, is going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, that we have a decade of, of data, but as you, as you know, uh, aortic valve replacement may happen in uh, the fourth or fifth decade of life, and how long these valves are going to last, uh, these bioprosthetic valves, is, is still an unanswered question, and really somewhat of an unanswered question for bioprosthetic valves that are surgically implanted, too. Uh, so that, I think, will be uh, one unanswered question that uh, we'll be watching closely. And what do you think is the upcoming thing in biomarker field right now in translational research? Well, I'm biased in this, uh, in, in this approach, but I think that we really need to make strides in differentiating types of myocardial infarctions. Uh, you know, with the release of the fourth universal definition of MI, I think they did a great job of, of pointing out that not all myocardial infarctions are the same. Uh, certainly, we are uh, well aware uh, and have great uh, data on how to treat athothrombotic myocardial infarction, but myocardial infarctions that arise from non-athothrombotic causes and uh, supply-demand mismatch and, and the whole area of um, acute non-ischemic myocardial injury, uh, we really need better ways of diagnosing and differentiating, and then from there we could develop uh, di uh, you know, ways to specifically treat these patient populations. What advice do you have for early career attendings? Well, for here at the ACC, uh, you know, the scientific community, I, I really encourage them to engage uh, others in the field um, at, at any level, whether it would be at the same level as uh, that they are at or uh, those that have been in the field for decades to get their insight uh, uh, on both the science as well as career development and making a difference um, beyond your patient-to-patient -patient interaction, but making a difference on, on how uh, you will impact the entire field of cardiology in, uh, in a way that will benefit society. I want to thank Dr. D. Philippus for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the ACC. Oh, thanks for the interview.